Hey, Scott and Bart here with the Scotch Test Dummies. I'm Scott. I'm Bart. We're practicing social distancing. We're right in the middle of the coronavirus. Stay away. For years, we've talked about a Mexican whiskey. We finally got one. It's called Sierra Norte. Sierra Norte, 15% barley, 85% native corn. And we're going to test it south of the border style, baby. Mexico whiskey style. lead in yeah they've got their yellow their black and their white i know you may have yours arranged differently but i've got them on camera here so yeah so these okay for for years we have talked about okay when we first started we were scotch only yes and then we we were like you know we're in the states there's all these bourbons around us we should be doing these as well and then we started doing Canadian whiskeys, Irish whiskeys, Japanese whiskeys. And so we broke them out into segments. We've got what we call world whiskeys, and we've got what we call North American whiskeys. Because, because the North American continent, well, Canadian, American, and Mexican. And, and we've never had a Mexican whiskey. We've actually brought in some mezcal just to kind of make up. But, but not a, not a mezcal isn't a whiskey. Right. But to make up, that's why I said to make up, you bring mezcal. Yeah. Um, just so that we had something from south of the border as well. But yeah, we were both saying, you know what? If we can ever see, get a hold of, surely somebody's doing a grain whiskey in Mexico. We'll buy it and put it on the show. You found it. Here it is. Yeah. So I'm in total uh, wine and spirits. I'm in Dallas. Uh, Texas, and here I see Sierra Norte, one of them. Uh, maybe it's the white corn. And yeah. then, uh, well, and so what they have, they have three offerings. They do one that's all white corn, one that's all yellow corn, and one that's all black corn. So mm -hmm. they had all three bottles there. Um, we'll get into the price points and stuff here later. Not too bad. And, um, but I figured we'd start with the white corn, yellow corn, and then black corn. Got it. All right. Let me rearrange. We'll go like this, this, we'll go like this. Because, yeah, what they say is they've they've handpicked the corn and they're separated into the cobs of white, yellow, and black. And then they're distilled separately to get what they experience as a different flavor profile. I'll list it out on a nice little card here. I'm going to say it wrong, but uh, it's distilled from a... How would you say, is it Oxycon corn? Oaxacan. Oaxacan. I was so close. Yeah. God, <laughs> wow. Not even in the ballpark there. That was terrible. Oaxacan. <laughs> Oaxacan. I made it like a Native American kind of thing. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> It's like the lady that called to confirm that my uh, oldest son had a dental appointment. His name's Bo, spelled with the French spelling. And she called, not knowing what it was for, and said, I'm confirming an appointment for B. I was like, what? I didn't even figure what she was doing. And I said, who? B. I and she did it twice. I go, oh, Bo. And she goes, is that how you say it? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's a French spelling. I think she'd only seen B-O. So, uh, yeah, that's what I just did. I'll let you pronounce it henceforth. All right. So, distinct noses, I'll tell you, on all three of these. And I'm getting it. When I bought these in Dallas, I opened them. I had to sample them just to see where we were at. Very distinct noses on them. They are different as well on the palate. I'm getting a... Um, just, I mean, like straw, hay. Now, I'm going to say different, but I didn't find them necessarily super distinct. So I'm curious. Um, I, I mean, I get, 
I think you would guess they were cousins. Yeah, I think you would be able to tell they're like from the same distillery, the same family. But yeah, different, especially on the palate. Yeah, the black one has the most gentle nose. And it's like a spicy, makes me kind of, but you're right. There's that hay, fresh mown hay kind of hint. But the sweetest one for me is the black one. We're supposed to be on the white one. Are you going back? Are you doing them all? Well, when you said they were distinct, I I was thinking, man, I remember them being a lot more similar, hard to break out. So yeah, I was I was nosing them all to get the differences. Actually, the white nose is a little more pronounced, a little bit more sultry, a little bit more dirty, a little sultry. bit more dank. Wow, sultry, dirty, and dank compared to the yellow. Yellow to me, sweeter, honeyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey is perfect on the yellowed one. It's it almost it's weird. It smells thicker, which is a weird to smell thickness. I was just gonna say it smelled milder than the well, white. The sweeter, the sweeter, thicker, kind of like molasses is what I was thinking. Ooh, and then the black. We're back. The black is back to some of that wild hay and spice. Wild floral earth dank. Yeah, it's interesting. And then being 85% corn and 15% barley. And then what they're labeled as is single barrel whiskey. So, oh, yeah, that is true. I forgot about that part as well. Yeah, they're labeled single barrel whiskey. All right, I'm going to go in on palette on the white. Okay. You white, go ahead. Corn. white corn. White corn, and I will say on here it's 45% ABV. This is batch 01, barrel number 128. What do you got? First sip, good, straw, hay, earthy. little dank, a little bit of the honey, citrus sweetness, not, well, not citrus, honeyed, um, powdered sugar type sweetness. So they also point out there's no coloring or flavoring added, but they do use French oak casks. So, and that definitely lends itself toward, you can't really see it, but they're the whiskey almost has like a, um, oh, like a, a little bit more of that pinkish hue to it. And you know what it reminded me of? The color that we got off of some of the whiskeys that used French oak mm. when we were, we were at Waterford. Yeah. And you uh, could see that there. Now, I wondered, is there any sort of an age statement on there or anything about a, maybe a minimum uh, amount of time that that's aged? I would imagine it's shorter. Mexico is is can be pretty hot. No, they mentioned just again that they distill the, the different colored cobs are distilled separately in small batch in a small batch pot still. So it is pot still distilled. All right. I'm going to move on to the yellow corn. Let me uh, rinse my palate a little bit. And then that the master distiller is Douglas French. So, um, yeah, let me do the same here. I'll try not to crinkle. Whoop, little crinkle there. Yellow corn to me has the best nose. I'll see how it does on the palate. Okay. Uh, that dankness is definitely on the nose, which is interesting. Hmm. wonder what that is. Yeah, it does not say how, how old it is, how long it was aged. Hmm. Real similar to the white corn. Actually, I think, do what? Do you get a little more dustiness in it? I was going to say, it's actually, I think the uh, the white corn is a little bit sweeter, a little bit more of the honey coming through on the palate on the white corn. The yellow corn is, yeah, it's a little bit more muted. Not, and I get dusty and drier, a little more extreme. Yeah, 
I would agree with that. Hmm. That's interesting, though. Definitely, like, um, I get a little more oak note here as well. Yeah, nice oak. A little bit of spice. Maybe a little bit more spice on this. I think the um, white corn is a little sweeter. This is a little spicier. This is, I mean, this being the yellow corn. Speaking of spicier, I've not mentioned my shirt. Oh, you don't have to mention it. <laughs> I, I like coming in close. Like that right there. Just right in there. Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to pop yeah. that. Doing a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. I'll stick by that. I think the white comes off a little bit more sweeter, a little bit more honeyed. Yellow is a little bit spicier. Still some of those, um, the sweet notes are in there with it, but it's a little bit spicier, a little bit oakier. I agree 100%. Um, which, I wish we had an age statement, but I think you're right. Um, it can get so warm down there. I mean, it could age rapidly. Look what we've got going on in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. All right. I'm going to move on to the black. I'm going to tell you up front, this was not my favorite. Really? When I, when I tasted, tested them. Huh. When I sampled. You see, I sampled them. What? what? I'm going to see if it's changed because when I first okay. had it, I was not impressed with the black corn. All right, because I kind of just poured them last night a little bit and tried them out, but I didn't give them like a hard sit-down study comparison. Yeah. So I remember thinking, okay, these are good. I, I wasn't sure what to even expect. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say the same with the, with the white corn and the yellow corn. Now, originally, I would tell you the first time I sampled the black corn, that was my regret of the three was buying that one. Maybe it's changed. Let's find out. Hmm. I'm on the black now. I get a weird two-tone flavor. At first, it's a little spicy, but then it turns like sweet. Yeah, the black is not for me. Really? No. It is the, um, the funkiest. It is... It tastes moldy. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's a corked bottle. Well, no, because they've got synthetic corks. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's just the difference in the corn that gives it a little bit more of that funk. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of funk. I mean, this is I mean, if you're if, if you're in the Scotch realm and you're thinking spring bank funk, this is it. This it tastes like it's been buried in a dirt floor <laughs> and they just pulled it up out. It's a uh, yeah, it's uh, this one, this one does not hit my palate. I like the white and the yellow. Hmm. See, I get the funk on the forefront. Wow, there's a lot of F. I get the funk on the forefront. <laughs> but then it kind of switches over to a honeyer, honeyed sweetness. Malty, sour. To me, it's um, the Johnny Walker, White Walker, sour, uh, moldy grain taste hmm. yeah maybe that maybe it's young maybe it's youth well no because it's, it's 85 percent corn but yeah i don't this one uh, the black i would recommend the white and the yellow uh probably the white that would be my order number one out of these would be the white corn then the yellow corn and the black corn I, yeah. hmm. so, I mean some people are gonna like that um, you know, scoring these are, I mean, they're still, I, I'm going to go 85s on these and I, I don't want to score the, the black. These are, I mean, because they're different. There's a, I mean, it's a, it's a Mexico whiskey and they are a little bit different. They're kind of, maybe there's a little bit of the youth showing that some of the, um, the sourness, the dankness, but they're not bad. I'm glad we got to try them and, you know, the whiskey from Oaxaca. Very well said. Now, I would agree with you. I think a little bit of the youth is here. Let this go another year or two, assuming they're not going to get over-oaked due to the heat down there. Yeah. Um, so that leads to, because I would not disagree with you. I'm glad we got a chance to try them. Yeah. 
Um, I did not dislike the black. I would agree that I agree with your exact tasting notes, sweeter on the white, spicier on the yellow, and a little bit of that dank dirt basement on the black. I'm actually very surprised that by separating by color, they got that much of a distinct, distinctive difference. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was when I read this and when you first gave it to me and I sampled them, I thought, oh, they are a little different. I thought maybe that was a little marketing and it's not. They're, they're very different. So it was a good experience. I love having something from south of the border in. I would agree with your 85s. I would do it across the board, and I would. I wish they would be aged a little longer because I think we are getting a little bit of the youth. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's some of the sour, some of that dank stuff that you're getting is a little bit of the youth, the white dog showing. Now, I would guess these are two years, maybe a year and a half even. At the most three probably would be my guess. But I don't know how warm it is down there in, how do you say it again? Oaxaca. Oaxaca. <laughs> but so price point wise, the yellow and the white corn, I believe were $45. The black corn was the most expensive and it jumped up. I think it was $55 for the black corn. Now, why would that be? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that maybe they just don't have as much of the black corn. But to me, it was, it was the... Le my least favorite of the three, I would buy the white and the yellow ahead. I mean, again, bef way before the black. So hmm. I still love the fact that, uh, that they're down there doing this. Um, we've talked for a long time that, especially with what Texas is showing with the heat of the region, I think they could do some amazing things in Mexico with grain spirit, with whiskey, with barley, and real quick, I don't know if you said it. Are they all forty-five? I think they're all they're all the same ABV. Were they forty-five percent? Yeah, forty-five on the white. Yep, forty-five on the yellow, and forty-five on a black. All right, Here so, you go. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Cilantro. Dumb. Dumb.